Hello people, welcome to Exam Savvy. Exam Savvy is a site that has all the information related to examinations, scholarships, fellowships, educational loans and so on. So, if you are an academic or an intellectual, maybe you'll have to visit the site often. This video is about to explain you everything about CSAR UGC test for Junior Research Fellowship. So, what exactly is CSAR UGC test? CSAR conducts CSAR UGC test every year to determine eligible Indian candidates for junior research fellowships. This is also used to assess the eligibility for appointing lecturers as the Faculty of Science and Technology. Two objectives people uh, to, to select eligible Indian candidates for junior research fellowship and also to appoint lecturers in the Department of Science and Technology. Two objectives. Now more about CSAR UGC test. The final result consists of two individual merit lists. One list has the candidates for the junior research fellowship awards and the other has the candidates who qualify the eligibility test for lecturership. As mentioned above, it has connection with the object it has con uh, connections with the objective I mentioned above. Uh, one list has the candidates for the junior research fellowship awards and the other has the candidates who qualify the eligibility test for lecturership. The list will be made on the basis of their performance in the above test. The candidates who are qualifying for junior research fellowship will by default also be eligible for lecturership. The candidates who are eligible for lecturership will by default be eligible for lecturership and both JRF in a project. The candidates can take up a PhD program with or without any fellowship. People, it's a, it's left up to you. If you are to take up the, if you are a candidate, you can take up the PhD program with or without any fellowship. And candidates who are qualifying for JRF award will receive the fellowship either from CSIR or UGC. CSIR and UGC are two different schemes. You will either get a fellowship under CSIR or under uh, UGC. If you are to take your fellowship under CSAR, you will have to ab abide by their uh, rules and regulations. If you are to take up a fellowship under UGC, you might have to abide by their rules and regulations. I believe you can understand. Age eligibility. The candidates must be between 19 years and 28 years of age. However, the candidates upper age limit can be relaxed up to 5 years if you fall under the following categories. SC, ST or OBC. If you belong to any of these castes, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe or OBC, you will be given a relaxation of up to 5 years plus uh, from 28 years of your age. Alright, if you are physically handicapped or if you are visually handicapped, you will be given the same relaxation of 5 years. All right, and if you are a female applicant, again you can look for a re relaxation of up to five years from 28 years of age, which means 28 plus 30, uh, uh, 28 plus five years of age, which makes it 33. So your uh, age eligibility extends from 28 to 33. I hope you can understand. Uh, educational qualification: the candidates must have completed a BS that has four years de uh, duration. For example, a BS Bachelor of Science, say for example, BE Bachelor of Engineering, B Tech Bachelor of Technology, B Pharma Bachelor of Pharmacy, MBBS Integrated BSMS. So these are the majors. All right, Bachelor of Science, which has four years duration. Now that's not all. In addition to that, the candidate has to get enrolled in a PhD or an integrated PhD program immediately after the majors. All right, majors I mentioned, right? BS, Bachelor of uh, Engineering, BTEC, B Pharma, MBBS, Integrated BSMS. Immediately after the majors, the BS degree, you're supposed to get enrolled with a PhD or an integrated PhD program within a span of two years. And that's not all. You're supposed to score at least 50 percentage in your PhD degree after your BS, after your major. Only then you are uh, qualified to take up this examination for the fellowship or the lecturership. 
Now moving on to the areas of the examination. These are the subjects that you have to focus uh, during your preparation for this examination. Chemical science, earth science, life science, mathematical science, physical science, engineering science. Chemical science, earth science, life science, mathematical science, physical science, engineering science. Six subjects. Alright. Okay. Now moving on to the examination pattern. The question paper carries a maximum of 200 marks. The exam duration is 3 hours. Now moving on to the interesting topic of stipend. The selection for the fellowship is, is done based on the score in the test. The stipend for the selected candidates will be rupees 12,000 per month for 2 years. I repeat 12,000 per month for 2 years. And that's not all. There is also an annual contingent grant of rupees 20,000 which will be given directly to the institute, institution. Which means uh, a stipend of rupees 12,000 per month for 2 years in addition to the annual contingent grant of rupees 20,000. This 20,000 rupees is, an, is, on, is given on an annual basis and will be given directly to the institute. Uh, where you take your fellowship directly given to your institute all right on an annual basis for two years all right i hope you uh, learned a lot of information about the csa or ugc test for junior research fellowship thank you for watching more information at examsavvy.com thank you